The third return fire challenge I wanted to cover involves what I consider to be the best score streak in the game. The decommission challenge. Destroy an RC8. Unlike the Zenith Strike Challenge, which had us destroying five Apex streaks, you only need to destroy a single RC-8. Now before I cover its weaknesses, let's learn about what we'll be up against. The massive RC-8 is a combat robot, built for destruction. Once deployed, after a spectacular arrival from orbit, it can either be left on automatic, or you can take full manual control. It's armed with a powerful energy weapon, and a shield that can be used to block incoming fire. Compared to the Apex, it's obviously much slower. But unlike the Apex, the energy weapon at its disposal can fire continuously, and it actually packs a punch. I often find myself getting 15 plus kills with each manually controlled RC-8, unlike the typical Apex, which normally nets me less than 10 kills. One other note about the RC-8 is that it explodes upon expiration, whether that be when the time limit runs out or when it's actually destroyed. Anything caught in its blast will be instantly incinerated. So what's the best method to destroy one of these combat robots? As its size would indicate, the RC-8 has the most health out of any score streak in the game. Using the Mauler Mammoth LMG without FMJ, it takes 47 bullets to take out an RC-8. For comparison, it only took 39 bullets for the Apex. Now with FMJ, it drops to 32 bullets. Again, for comparison, the Mammoth with FMJ drops an Apex in 25 bullets. So this high health, coupled with an extremely powerful weapon at its disposal, spells disaster for regular bullets. And this is not a very viable method. So I went through the process of testing each and every item in the game against the RC-8. Similar to the Apex, score streaks also don't fare well against the monstrous RC-8. So unless you use a combination of multiple streaks at once, these won't be very effective. Since we only have to destroy a single RC-8, I'll just cut to the chase and show you the best two methods at your disposal. First, the MacGyver of tactical items in Infinite Warfare, the Jammer Grenade. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that this item acts as the EMP grenade in this game. As such, it takes four Jammer Grenades to take out a fresh RC-8. Now that may not sound too ideal, but we can put it to good use as you'll soon see. There's one specific item in the game that can destroy the RC-8 effortlessly. The item in question is Striker's third payload, the Centurion. I can't praise the Centurion enough. If you've never used it before, I definitely recommend you try it out. So the Centurion is this game's true EMP device, a super-powered trophy system, if you will. The Centurion will destroy all incoming projectiles and fuzzes the minimaps of hostile players with its EMP effect. So what does it do against the RC-8, exactly? You'd have to see it to believe it but it drops the mammoth robot instantly. As soon as you deploy the Centurion, the robot will engage in self-destruction. This also means that should you see the marked landing spot for the incoming RC-8, deploying the Centurion prior to it dropping will result in it instantly deactivating upon arrival. Talk about making a difficult challenge incredibly easy. There's two more things to note about the RC-8. First, just like the Apex, the RC-8 is always displayed on your minimap and that's with or without the engineer perk. Of course, if you do have the engineer perk equipped, it'll glow a crimson red and you can see it through the walls. Second, there's two counters to the robot, hardwired and blind eye. Hardwired counters a manually controlled RC-8 by removing the red diamond around your character, but chances are the person controlling the robot will be spraying nonstop anyway, so you'll likely die regardless. Now blind eye counters an automated RC-8, and by counters, I mean makes you completely immune. You can walk right up to the dreadful Terminator and give its festering taint a love tap, and it'll be none the wiser. So should you encounter an automated RC-8 and you're wearing the blind eye perk, consider the challenge all but completed. The issue lies in the fact that you can't tell if it's automated or not right away, unless you're right up close to it. If you see it walking around like a newbie booby, it's probably automated. Be warned, however, that you can tell when it becomes player controlled. Watch here as it does a literal 1980s robot maneuver. That's the key you're watching for. Its shoulders will droop as if it's deactivating itself, only to resurge with the force of a Super Saiyan God. Rest assured, if you're standing there in teabag mode with your pants at your ankles when it comes to life, your ass is probably grass. Now when it comes to tactics, your best bet is to make a class setup that you can instantly switch to upon hearing an RC-8 being deployed. You should equip two jammer grenades, blind eye for perk 1 in case you encounter an automated one, 
and engineer in perk 3, since that'll give you the jump on the RC-8 by seeing it through the walls. You don't necessarily have to pick Striker in the Centurion right away, as it's possible to switch mid-match. As for game mode, if the drop zone game mode is around at any point, that's the most ideal. You'll often find at least one RC-8 per match. If there's no drop zone game mode available, you could run a drone package yourself in an attempt to give it to the enemy. I did a video covering the odds of receiving each streak in a drone package, and believe it or not, the RC-8 isn't really as rare as you would expect. Now I know it would pain most of you to give such a streak away, but sometimes you have to make sacrifices to achieve perfection. When you're finally ready to seek and destroy the RC-8, the strategy is simple. First, you can always test the waters on a deployed RC-8 by hitting it with a jammer grenade. If other players have already weakened it, you may be surprised to find out that a mere one or two jammer grenades will do the trick. The ideal strategy, however, is to switch to the Centurion payload as soon as you hear the RC-8 get called in. Then, do whatever it takes to get to deployment range. If you die, don't stress about it, simply respawn and keep on trudging towards your target. Chances are that most people will have no idea how to best take out the RC-8, so it should still be there no matter how many deaths you endure. If you have the engineer perk equipped, you can anticipate the movements of the RC-8 and thus get your Centurion ready to deploy. Once you're ready, deploy the Centurion at the feet of the RC-8. Once it gets placed down, the RC-8 will be terminated, regardless if you die in the process or not. Now if you're content on the jammer grenade method, simply toss both jammer grenades from a safe distance. Let the RC-8 entertain the hope that somehow he'll escape you by letting him kill you. Upon respawning, you can come back with your next set of jammer grenades and easily finish him off from long range, without having to run right up next to him. The preferred method is to use the Centurion to instantly annihilate this powerful enemy in a mere second. With this strategy, the hardest part about this challenge is actually encountering the RC-8 itself. So the next time you see an enemy RC-8, let the enemy drink deeply the illusion of his safety as you deploy your anti-terminator.